This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The following chapter is designed to help you with question one and looking at your group accounts. And just go through and recap the presentation of your financial statements. So remember, the financial statements consist of your statement of financial position, your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, your statement of changes in equity, your statement of cash flows, and don't forget as well that in IS1 it wants your notes of the accounts and also there is it your comparatives. Now, in terms of question one and part A for 35 marks, 63 minutes of your life, you need 18 minutes or 18 marks, I should say, to go through there and pass the question. You will either have to prepare a group statement of financial position. So it's important there that we recap what we know for your position statement. Uh, you may also be required to prepare your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Or alternatively, you will have to use the statement of financial position given, the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, and the statement of changes in equity and other information to help you prepare a group statement of cash flows. Now, the focus of this session is just to go through there and make sure that you are happy with, first of all, the statement of financial position the statement of profit or loss of the comprehensive income, and also as well that you understand what the statement of change in equity shows you. You're not going to have to prepare it, or it, at least it has never been required to have been prepared in the past. So therefore, it's unlikely to be seen in the future, but it's important to have an awareness of the statement of change in equity because you will use that in a group statement of cash flows question to help you prepare the group statement of cash flows. Uh, from an exam perspective, again, the notes of the accounts, we're, we're not going to be prepared or asked to prepare any notes of the accounts. And likewise, we're not going to ask to prepare any comparatives for the financial statements that we are expected to prepare. Uh, just be aware of the point at the bottom. Again, I think you should all be aware of that. Uh, we need to ensure there that the financial statements give a fair presentation. So to give that fair presentation, we need to ensure that we comply with IFRS's and if we haven't, we need to give an explicit statement why we haven't complied with the IFRSs and what the impact is. Moving on, uh, let's look at the statement of financial position. Uh, it's not a group statement of financial position as such. Obviously, your group SFP will contain other aspects such as goodwill, non-controlling interests. Uh, we're just going to look at an individual company one and then you can expand upon that as we look into the group accounts. Uh, again, I don't think there's anything there to go through and give yourself any palpitations. Remember, you've got the assets at the top, equity and liabilities at the bottom. Uh, learn the pro forma. Uh, the bits that I would point out there are your financial assets. Could be an either. Is it there your non-current or current, uh, depending upon when we expect to receive the cash or when we go through there and expect to realise the investment. Uh, the only other line item, I suppose, that you could fit within there would be part of your intangibles for the groups, which would be there, your goodwill, wouldn't it? Okay. Uh, remember, when you're looking at it from a group's perspective, uh, there are no presentation marks given within question one, part A. So feel free to abbreviate. Uh, you can, if you like, not put in the totals and subtotals, but please do make sure that you add across the line items. So add across 100% of P plus 100% of S plus any adjustments. And if there are any workings, make sure you reference things back to your workings. So total things up across on a line by line basis. You don't have to put in the totals and subtotals, but you are asked to prepare the group statement of financial position. So you should really put in the totals and subtotals, but you shouldn't lose any credit if you didn't. However, if it was a borderline case of pass or fail and you had put in the totals and subtotals, then you'll be pushed over that finishing line because you have presented exactly what is asked of you. OK, again, make sure that you put in the title at the top, even though it is not required so that you can show there that it is as at a point in time. OK, it's a snapshot, a picture of the assets, the liabilities and the equity. OK, again, just be aware that within your current assets, just at the bottom as well, you've got your non-current assets or disposal groups held for sale, which is covered there, isn't it, by IFRS 5. So if there is any IFRS 5 that you see within the additional information, which has been tested in the past as part of group accounts, the number appears on the face and then your calculations go in a working at the back. OK, 
Uh, in terms of your equity and liabilities, again, I don't think there should be anything too much to warrant stresses. Uh, but remember, within your equity, you've got your equity shares, retained earnings, and then your other components of equity. So that's got any share premium in, any gains on revaluation, any gains or losses that you have on remeasurement to fair value of financial assets held at fair value through other comprehensive income. So it's like a, a glorious dumping ground, isn't it, for anything that has not gone through profit or loss. Anything that goes through profit or loss goes to retained earnings. Everything else goes to other components of equity, doesn't it? In terms of your liabilities, again, current and non-current splits. Uh, new bits that you've got there that we will see are looking at your retirement benefit liability. So when we come to look at pensions in IS-19, uh, the majority of your defined benefit pension schemes tend to be running at a deficit, i.e. there is an excess of liabilities over assets. So that tends to be shown there in your non-current liabilities unless instructed otherwise or unless in rare circumstances that it is a retirement benefit asset. Okay. Uh, other bits as well, you have your finance lease liabilities. Again, if you have the time in the exam, you can always split it, can't we, between current and non-current. There's not much to it. I don't think there's anything else particularly there that, that is untoward. If we go through there and think about, is it your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income? Again, remember that is a story for 12 months, isn't it? So it tells you the story for the year ended, for that 12-month period ended on the same date as the statement of financial position. Again, just touching upon IFRS 5. IFRS 5 is made of your non-current assets held for sale and also your discontinued operations. So remember, when you're looking at your statement of profit or loss, we split that into your continuing and your discontinued operations. Uh, again, once we go through there and look at your continuing, there isn't there anything untowards, is there? Revenue, cost of sales, distribution admin, Again, don't forget, sometimes they could be potentially combined just as your other expenses uh, before you then get to your operating profit or profits before interest and tax. So remember, that's the PBIT, isn't it? Finance costs, investment income, PBT, income tax, and then your profit from your continuing operations. Uh, you've then got your discontinued operations under IFRS 5. It could be a profit more likely to be a loss as you get rid of that activity that's the reason why you've discontinued it is that it is not very profitable so within there it will have the results of the discontinued operation revenue and all your costs netted off and then if it has been disposed of as a discontinued operation there could be a loss on disposal as well to incorporate key bit is that you then go through there add together those figures there to get you or total profit or loss for the period, don't we? Uh, IFRS 5 essentially is all about disclosure, isn't it, with regards to non-current assets held for sale on the SFP and your discontinued operations on the statement of profit or loss. What you will find as we go through a lot of the accounting standards, particularly some of the newer ones, a lot of them are very disclosure-based. So here, IFRS 5, uh, IFRS 7, financial instruments, IFRS 8, with regards to your operating segments, IFRS 12, your disclosures, in your other entities, okay, or your disclosures of investments in other entities. So there's a lot of new standards that are very disclosure based. So it's beginning to clutter things up, but we'll talk about binning the clutter at a later date. Uh, so essentially everything in profit or loss is realised, isn't it? Your other comprehensive income is essentially things that have been not yet realised, so they're stored up within the reserves. And the two that you've got there, the gain on your non-current asset revaluations and then any gain or loss on fair value through other comprehensive income investments. Again, I'm not going to complicate it any further. That OCI could be split out into amounts that get reclassified up to profit or loss, which essentially those gains or losses on fair value through OCI could get reclassified back up to profit or loss on disposal because then the gains are realised. But we could also go through there and have an other comprehensive income aspect whereby the gains or the losses do not get reclassified through profit or loss. But I'm not too worried about that. But just have an awareness that that OCI could be further 
separately categorized out. Okay. Uh, once you've then got your other comprehensive income, again, it's all the net of tax. We go through there, don't we? And total everything up. Okay. Excellent. Again, key bits. Is it the profit for the year? That goes then to, is it your statement of change in equity? As to, does your other comprehensive income? Okay. Uh, if we go through there and have a look at your statement of change in equity, just to go through there and finish it all off. Again, it's just recapping and make sure you're familiar with the, the formats. You're not going to have to prepare this statement of change in equity. The two previous financial statements you could be expected to prepare. However, exam questions only tend to get you to prepare one or the other. It's never been a combination of the two. And it's highly unlikely either because it just doesn't give the examiner scope to examine enough of those different accounting standards that we see later on. In terms of the statement of change in equity, again, that is prepared telling a story because it looks at how things have changed over the year from the start of the year to the end of the year. Uh, there could be in your equity share some issue of share capital. So that's going to go through there and be very useful later on, isn't it? Uh, with regards to your statement of cash flows, because that could go through there and give you an inflow from the proceeds On issue of shares okay uh, likewise as well when we go through there and look at the retained earnings uh, you've got there your dividends so that could go through there couldn't it and start to help you work out maybe some dividends paid uh, and then we go through there don't we and you can see your total comprehensive income figure so you've got there isn't it your your profit for the year and then you've got there isn't it your other comprehensive income okay uh, that figure on the right hand side the total is your total comprehensive income isn't it okay there we go and again tiny little bit just to finish things off upon uh, remember if you have a revaluation that revaluation gain has gone to your other components of equity uh, essentially like a revaluation surplus hasn't it and then what we're allowed to do is we're allowed to go through there and take a little bit of that gain and transfer it back into retained earnings for any excess depreciation we are now charging following the revaluation of the asset we know the depreciation we previously charged the new depreciation is based upon the fair value over the remaining life of the asset so as the fair value is higher it's likely that the new depreciation charge will be higher than the old. So the difference between the two, the excess depreciation, is there as a reserve transfer. Again, in questions, it doesn't necessarily say that the company makes that reserve transfer. You make the assumption that unless told otherwise, that reserve transfer is made. That's very important. There have been past exam questions regarding revaluations. And the question has not stated anything to do with the reserve transfer. And the assumption being is that you make the reserve transfer because it is of benefit to the users of the financial statements, the shareholders, because your other component of equity is essentially a non-distributable reserve. You know, that revaluation gain of PPE is not distributable. But as you transfer it through to retained earnings, it does then become distributable. And if there are more distributable reserves available, then there is the likelihood of the potential of a higher dividend, isn't it? So it's much more beneficial to make that reserve transfer for the shareholders. Questions don't tell you. You have to assume that it is made. Other than that, that's it pretty much for now from that little chapter. I hope you're happy now with the format of the SFP, profit or loss on OCI, and that you could use those pro formers there to go through and prepare the group accounts. And also as well that you're happy with what the statement of change in equity looked like, what it tells you, and also these little nuggets of information there in terms of how that can go through and help you calculate some pretty straightforward cash flows when you're given a statement of change in equity and asked to prepare your group statements of cash flows. Other than that, in the next session, we're going to start things off seriously when we begin to look at the world of group accounts. So 
Get yourselves ready, strap yourselves in, and I'll see you shortly.